they're trying to get people out of this hotel, and it's like, you know, they, they got to come with the jaws of life. Get, 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 get people out for what? You know, check out. Check out's at noon. They're just banging oh. on doors. You know, <laughs> people are waking up groggy like, yo, what? They're like, yo, <laughs> what? They're like, the, the, staff, the staff has those needles that they, like the paramedics give to heroin addicts. <laughs> <laughs> are we rolling yet? Yeah. Okay. I'm rolling. Um, yeah, no, it's bad. They, uh, you know, the, the people next door to us, like they were just, I thought the cops were here. <laughs> like they were just banging on the door. And then finally the door swings open and a guy's like, he's like sleepy and you could tell, you know, and they're like, you have to leave. Like they're, they're <laughs> like, they're not even using the word check out anymore. They're like, you have to leave. You have to go. <laughs> you can't live here. <laughs> this isn't your home. My this friend, ain't <laughs> this ain't Holiday Inn, motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, where are you? I'm in South Beach, man, in Miami. The the party here is intense, and uh, you know, obviously, it's Miami. There's some very hot people. There's some very good looking people, but there is some real sloppy pigs. I'm talking <laughs> women in the high twos and well into the threes. <laughs> Uh, oh, hundreds, and, apparently. I mean, yeah, three hundreds, yeah. <laughs> uh, wearing bikinis and like the sheer outfits that you can see everything. I sure. mean, it's we've gone a little far with the body positivity. I think. I mean, some men like that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, sure, but I mean, we're just we're going we're going. All no, it's the way. crazy. But I, I have a feeling these people aren't reading Vogue, Teen Vogue magazine, and getting their. Uh, Taking their cues from that. That's a good point. I think maybe their <laughs> maybe their confidence is innate. <laughs> you know, maybe it wasn't. Uh, they didn't need a blog to let them know <laughs> that they were good enough. And I have no problem with people rocking out, big people. But it's just there's there's to me there are things aesthetically that look good and things that don't. It's like, you know, try to you know a little mystery is nice, right? Little mystery. <laughs> Let the gentleman uh, discover. Yes. Let the gentleman discover. Let him go on a journey of discovery. I mean, they got it all out. I mean, literally, we're looking at fat pussies. Wow. Like, literally, fat fupas are yeah. hanging out. Sounds nice. In brightly colored pastel <laughs> clothing. It's are lovely. fucking on the, on the beach in the streets? It's not like that that I've seen, but it's not that far away. Right. From that, like I could see it gets there. People are hanging out of windows of cars, dancing. They these people understand life much better than people that are like in Brooklyn in a room debating like you know uh, Karl Marx uh, on like a you know and they pull a ratty blanket up over themselves to go to sleep. Right. Uh, these people are just tits out, puss out. Coke in the nose, dancing out of the window of a car. If this is the end of America, as we have, you know, said that it is, why not go out with a literal bang? Yeah, you want to, like, you know, watch the end of the world while you're checking your mutual fund? Right. What is this? Well, there's also this idea that, like, these people, like, they don't really understand uh, what's going on outside of this area. Right. Yeah. And well, obviously, because they're fucking each other, not kids. Right, <laughs> right. So they are like, hey, I can just enjoy what I got. The food, I mean, the, the food's kind of dog food, you know? The croquettes are good. You have to go to the Cuban food. Yeah, that's fine. It's good. You want a nice Cuban sandwich with a ham and Swiss melted? Oh, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. I don't want to go to war with people in the comments about Cuban food. I'm no, sure really, it's fine. I've had some great Cuban food, but you know, some of it is you know, so it's all deep, deep fried and yeah. You know, we were eating last night. You know, a comic took us here last night. You know, it's funny. They were like, you know, the audience is very white. Some of the other comics, you're like, your audience is pretty white. I'm like, what? I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, there's diversity <laughs> in the audience, by the way. There's Get out of here, you white devils! Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, there's Hispanics, there's blacks, but, like, yeah, there's white people out there. 
And, uh, you know, the comic was like, yeah, they play a lot of white music this time in the club. Like, <laughs> they play like a journey for your fans. They're white people. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm sorry. It's called uh, diversity. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, you know, I get it. I'm sorry I don't do more bits in Spanish. I don't know Spanish. I only know the foods. Camarones. You could have learned. You could, you, you could have learned uh, one, you know, we use one of those uh, three-hour sessions of eating crawfish. Yeah, uh, to learn to learn to speak Espanol. I should have, but I mean, if a guy like me starts speaking Spanish, I immediately look like uh, a, a Republican congressman who's apologizing for something <laughs> horrible. Like I don't look like I'm doing the language. I, you know, I'm like, a, no, it's, kind, it's the kind of thing that like <laughs> you favor, learned it to get ahead. <laughs> policia is no good. No bueno. Policia no bueno. Ah, <laughs> uh, me. Uh, you know, so people assume you had to learn it to get a, a promotion at the DEA. <laughs> yeah, I learned Spanish when we were infiltrating. Have you haven't been down here to to Miami? No, I've been to New Orleans as close as I've been. I've never been to Florida yet. We got to get you to Florida. I'd love to go to South Beach, just hang out with the honeys. <laughs> <laughs> There are a lot of big guys here that all wear white shirts and little hats. I mean, this isn't. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. There's a life for us here. Sure. There's a it's life like, for know, us here. People assume that like this guy might be about things because he's a big guy. You know? there, if you it's, just wear a white 5X shirt from DXL with yeah. two like black stripes on either side and a little hat and you <laughs> smoke a cigar, people go, that guy's something. Yeah, that's a problem yeah. with certain fat people. They can't become a thing. Right. But like these people down here, are like the fat Cubans, they're a thing. And one of the guys last night was he's like, the Cuban people, he goes, we are strong fat. And he goes, we are fat, but we work. So our stomachs are hard, even though they're fat. I'm like, <laughs> that's not oh. true. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a very interesting way to, I get it. But the stomach they do hardening seem to, is I don't bad. want to speak out of turn here. Uh, we'll get into like, you know, differences of physiology. Right. But yeah, I I know what you mean. I mean, it's like like I used to say, what so there's like Samoan guys. There's a uh, there's big Samoan dudes. Like there's a I mean, Orwell wrote about this in in, in uh, Burmese days, which I'm not sure if that's still a if that's acceptable. But I don't, he didn't say anything that bad. I don't think. I'll go and, ask uh, the he, people in the hotel if we can use Burmese days from Orwell. <laughs> I'll go I'll go knock on the doors and ask everybody <laughs> if it's okay. But he described the body of like the I guess they were you know Mal Burma, which was what Myanmar now, and the, their fat was round. And shapely, not like not, not like porridge, like an Englishman's. Interesting, yeah. B well, it's a hardening, yeah. But I don't think there's something that's, to that. There is something to that. Well, someone yeah. was explaining it to me last night. I didn't understand it. He goes, "Cuban fat is hard uh, work fat, like it's fat that's become a muscle in a weird way." I don't know. I mean, obviously Maybe. not. But that was what was being discussed with me last night, eating croquettes at two o'clock in the morning uh, at a laundromat. Right. Yeah, to where I was. That's, uh, we, I was taking a laundromat, which was good, and we had croquetas and pastelitos. We had never, you know. I don't think. I don't, I don't think that's how you get work fat, though. <laughs> no, that is I, not two a.m. croquetas. Yeah, that is not the journey of work fat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just love the idea of a, a father looking at his son, who's like a chubby kid, and going, "The goal here is hard fat, <laughs> work fat." You understand? I love how, like, in the age of everything's acceptable, they're they're delineating fat types. <laughs> no, 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 you're a worse kind of fat. You're you're disgusting fat. <laughs> My stomach is hard because I work. I eat and I work, and I have hard fat. The fat is like muscle. Um, I'm beautiful, not disgusting fat like you, son. <laughs> you will never be work fat. <laughs> Work fat. What a great name for my new autobiography. <laughs> Work fat. Um, it's nice being out of Austin, Texas, which we all know we have to pretend is the uh, epicenter of the world. Uh, um, it, listen, it's a tax scam, which I'm glad to be a part of. But right. every time I say something nice about it, I feel like a guy talking about the beaches on the Cayman Islands, you know, like <laughs> the water. Have you had the food? And the guy's like, who gives a shit? You know, no, you got to understand it's crystal clear. The water is crystal clear. That's a good point. Do you think that the Caymans 
developed a, de- a decent culinary uh, culture because I'm of- sure it's fine, but I'm sure that it's not the reason people are going. You know, like I'm <laughs> no, sure. No, but you're gonna the- be there anyway. You get you get a nice uh, little yeah. Bistro. Well, they gotta service people. Yeah, when yeah. Je- Jeffrey Epstein shows up to check in on you, you want to get get him an eggs Benedict. You want to get him a Benny. He doesn't want to eat McDonald's. You don't want to. You don't, hard. you don't want just Lane Maxwell eating Arby's. Right. She's got to eat a Benny. You know, I mean, I get it. And listen, I like Austin to a degree, but it's also a dump and everything about it is disappointing. The people of the audiences are bad uh, from what the ones that I've encountered. And the, the city is like five or seven blocks of like just disgusting bars and like people busking with guitars. It's like some heroin addict playing Sweet Caroline or I mean, it's horrible. Well, from what you described to me, it sounds like Williamsburg, Brooklyn, with the addition of country line dancing. That's exactly what it is. It's Williamsburg, Brooklyn, uh, where all the, it, 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 and it just smells like a, a roasting pig. Right. Like the mesquite trees make the entire thing smell like a pulled pork sandwich. Like you can't get out of it. There's no getting away from it. Is barbecue, let me ask you this, because I, I enjoy barbecue. I've never had, probably, did, I'm sure I've never had barbecue that good. You know, the decent places around here are still crap, probably. But that being said, is it the kind of food that you can eat all the time and still no, good? Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> but it's like anything else. People get used to it. Right. I mean, people just get used to the idea of eating pounds of meat, coleslaw, potato salad, macaroni and cheese, baked beans, uh, you know, a quart of sweet tea or more. That ruins it for me. Yeah, no, I, I, I've I, lambasted barbecue the thing about barbecue is, you know, the restaurants they serve it in, you know, and I, I, I talk about this on stage sometimes. You'll pass a place and you'll go, is that a homeless shelter? And they'll go, <laughs> no, that's the highest rated restaurant in the state. I mean, all of these barbecue restaurants do look like FEMA tents. They look like, you know, the, the majority of them, uh, the best ones, the ones you really want to go to look like it's where you would take someone to get like, you know, I don't know, a, a poor person would get like an abortion consultation, you know, not even where they'd perform the abortion, but where they'd have to sit you down and go like, here are the options. And instead they give you, you know, meat and pickles. I mean, it's just, it's a dumpy thing. And Eventually it's it. going to get to the point where they just throw you down on top of a trash can. One guy fucks you in the ass and the other one's feeding you pulled pork. That's coming. Yeah. That's on its way. That's the new experience. That's the new Franklin barbecue experience, <laughs> which you'll pay $700 for and you'll wait in line for three weeks. That's right. the other thing. You wait in lines. People stand in lines. And, and after the pandemic, forget it. The lines are coming back. I mean, these lines snake around the block. It's like you're waiting for a, a, a ride at Disney World, except the ride is brisket. It, it just to me, I don't know. I want to go in. I want to sit down. I want to eat. And I want to leave. Right. I don't want to eat off a garbage can lid. But I get it's a cool experience to have a few times a year. But as a cuisine that you could do anything with, it's just not. I mean, you can't take, like, like, I guess you could take investors out for barbecue, and I'm sure these tech demons will. I'm sure these monsters will, you know, like they'll be there eating ribs and talking about, you know. Selling data of children's nurseries. Yeah. (laughs) Get them, get to know them when they're young, you know, (laughs) pass the pork. Yeah, Sure. (laughs) Miami, I don't know why anyone gets anything done. I mean, it's not a city where you can function. I mean, Peter Thiel moved down here. I know that. And he's been here a few years. He's an early so adapter to Miami as these <laughs> monsters from Clubhouse. He's an early adapter. Oh, adopter. Yeah. Adopter, right. Well, right, yeah. an early adopter. Um, is that because that it's so hot and humid, you're saying? Or is it just the party culture? It's just the party culture. It's, it's, it's hot, it's humid, it's beautiful. But it's also like, what are you going to do? It's very stress-free environment. Like, I, I can't see much getting done here. You know, it feels like it'd be nice, and like you know, early in the morning and late at night. But something about like that blaring sun in the middle of the day, and everyone's just out partying. It's LA's just, got the not- best climate. The best climate yeah. is that desert climate where it's like seventy five, eighty during the day. It's like hot. You're in the pool, and then at night you got the hoodie on. Nothing better. Truly, no better climate in the country. Everything else is humid. Uh, I mean, it's just a phenomenal climate. Now, obviously, that comes with a lot of problems. But if you want to talk about weather. You want to talk strictly weather? Yeah. Los Angeles has the best weather, I think, in the country. I think I might move to one of these hot spots, though, and just how, how can I stockpile penicillin to sell later? I, I don't. You're going to have to speak to someone on Clubhouse, the app right. that is rapidly degenerating and disintegrating uh, into a real 
I like literally I every time I ask someone about Clubhouse, I'm like, but this guy has money, right? They're like, <laughs> that guy is in a youth hostel. Like that person is literally homeless. Like, and I can't believe I was taken by this. Like, I'm fully admitting I was taken by Clubhouse. Like, I'm fully admitting I was egg on my face. I was completely bamboozled by this app. I saw Mark Andreessen in one room and I went, this is where the power players are. Every single person I have met from Clubhouse in the real world or have spoken to from Clubhouse is like a fraud on a level of, of, of epic proportions and not even a fun one. Like not even a, a Tin Men uh, fun aluminum siding salesman. Like it's just completely insane. I mean, it's crazy. Every time I've got a notification on my phone uh, since I joined, like, oh, this person's joined Clubhouse. You want to like help help invite them? It's always been people who like literally went to jail for identity theft. That I used to know, <laughs> like they just got out. I guess <laughs> the, the worst people I've ever met, and they're on my phone for some reason. Yeah, they're on Clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody who's writing bad checks is now like, yeah. hey, what's going on on Clubhouse? Right. Let me start a room. It was a great idea during the pandemic. And I, rem I remember I used to call Ray. I'm like, this is going to be big. And he's like, I don't know. I was swept up in the mania of the idea that Clubhouse was just going to be, because I had 50,000, I have like 50,000 followers. So I thought like, um, and if we don't, if you don't know what we're talking about here, just Google it, you moron. But I had 50,000 followers and I was like, oh yeah, this has got to be big. There's no way this won't be big. Uh, just because I got on it early, somewhat early, not that early, but I'm like, yeah. I'll be able to build here. And the whole app was just really Eric Weinstein talking for 23 hours a day. Well, you that told was me there was going to be this new, this new wild west of content and everyone's like, you can say whatever you want in these rooms that you're in. Right. And then like, I'm in a room with Jake Paul and he gets all clammed up because I mentioned the Golden Triangle. <laughs> I don't think he was clamped up. I think he had no idea what you were talking about. Well, he was like, I can get, get this guy out of here, which is fine. I mean, I'm not expecting him to I like it. I think the but Golden I'm no Triangle is seen... something he participated in in L.A., and he's terrified about what's <laughs> going to come out. He had no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> I've heard Jake Paul. Jake Paul was one of the most intellectual people on that app, though. I mean, literally, yeah. when he explained NFTs to David Spade, Spade could not even figure out, like, how to get on the app. He didn't know where his phone was. And, like, so Jake Paul... I was explaining NFTs and how kids are like digitally native to David Spade, and it was like a fascinating conversation. Well, yeah. yeah to be fair, I don't. I don't know if it's the negative to David Spade. I feel like the the, the younger mind has become more malle malleable to bullshit now. Sure, that, like, but he explained it with a silver tongue. Like he, sure. he, he did. It was beautiful. Why can't you get it, David? We're <laughs> fucking these people. <laughs> but you have, uh, you know. Lakeith Stanfeld, who's a fan of our show. I'm a fan heard. of his. What? I'm a fan of his. I, went to, I, I didn't know who he was last time, but I realized, like, oh, I love that guy. Well, well, I'm glad you said that because <laughs> he just moderated a clubhouse room where they were calling <laughs> Jews Satanists and parasites oh, and termites. <laughs> so I'm glad. <laughs> See, sometimes you got to wait for me to fully articulate what I was about to say. <laughs> And, and then he put up on his Instagram, which is hilarious. He goes, hey, man, it, thinking out of the box is always going to come with a cost. <laughs> Jesus. He goes, it's always going to come with a cost, man. Uh, so Lakeith, we feel bad for him. He's a fan of the show, but he moderated a club. Because some of these clubhouse rooms get real wild. And then people just put them on YouTube. It's not like, by the way, what a way to lose your job. Like, it's the clubhouse is the perfect way to lose your job. Oh, yeah. It's it's worse than Twitter. It's like well, you can't even hide yourself. You can't even hide. You can't even claim context because like it's literally a recording of you saying something, right? And so they they they're moderating these clubhouse rooms. It's uh, also like you only have to go in because what was the, was the name of the room like you know Satanist Jews or whatever? Because I don't know what the time. The name is, is, half the time these rooms are in, in, incriminating. Just, yeah. You're scrolling through and you go like Tom Arnold's in this room. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> It's always someone who's trying to get something going, too. Right. You know? It's always someone who's, like, coming back from the half dead, trying to crawl into this space. You know yeah. what I mean? You know what I mean? It's Skeet like... Skeet Ulrich. Yeah. Rick Moranis sounds off <laughs> on cancel culture. <laughs> you know? Freedom of expression. <laughs> yeah. It's like... It's like Rick Moranis, you know, says PC culture. Like, he reemerges... 
from the from raising his children to complain about PC culture. <laughs> um, but it was it's it's weird. And then journalists were just hanging out in the rooms to get people in trouble. Taylor Lorenz from the Times, famously, but there were others yeah. too. And then there were just scammers, like life coaches and and people that were selling. <laughs> I mean, this makes me laugh so hard. And if you buy one of these courses on Clubhouse, I just think you deserve everything you get. But people sure. that were selling... <laughs> I, I can't even get it out. People were selling, like, investment <laughs> advice and business strategy courses on Clubhouse. Like they, were, <laughs> they, were, they were selling, like, marketing Courses on Clubhouse. I mean, think Gary V, but like all the levels down, like when he just started, <laughs> when he has nobody. And people are getting really ripped off on Clubhouse. They were like life coaches on Clubhouse. This is a problem of like everyone wants to shit on college these days, yeah. and they are awful institutions. Yeah. But when you're in, in the absence of like actual colleges, look what you get. You get <laughs> this is why you have to have accredited university. Yeah. No, you get a life coach on Clubhouse. You know, I'm not going to mention her name, but there was a comic. I swear to God, we were in Caroline's. And she said to me once, she goes, I'm also a life coach, which I found odd. She right. was unsuccessful completely, but whatever. <laughs> then she told me that her and her family were being evicted from their home. <laughs> and I was just wrestling with all these ideas in my head of like, just the confidence that she has to then give other people advice. Like, that's my whole thing. I'm like, if you listen to this show, enjoy it. Maybe some of it's interesting or whatever, but it, I'm not giving you advice ever on anything. I'm yeah. like, I'll tell you what I think you should do, but that doesn't mean you should do it ever. That's because you like Unless people... you're 21 and healthy, in right. which case I suggest you not get vaccinated. <laughs> At Tim, yeah. J, Tim J. Dillon on Twitter, if the media picked this up, this would be horrible. I'm just trying to get attention. Right. Why is everyone still paying attention to him? <laughs> Um, you got you're vaccinated, Pfizer. Me too. Yeah, I got my second shot. You did too, right? Yeah. Did you get I was tired. I was lethargic and tired. Yeah. Um, I didn't get sick or anything. I didn't get sick either. I felt weird. My stomach felt weird. Okay. Yeah. So I would eat, and then my stomach would feel weird. I don't think I got that, but you know, I ate a bunch of pizza. You know, just instinctively. Yeah, <laughs> that's my body's defense mechanism. <laughs> yeah. Just to eat a whole pizza. The person giving you the shot goes, now listen, you might get a little sick, but here's a good way to hold it down. <laughs> Go eat some pizza. You want to hold this down? You want to hold the demon down? <laughs> Go eat some pizza right now. I mean, when you, when, you, when you think about the hilarity of Clubhouse now tanking and the right. people that run it, supposedly it has a $4 billion valuation. What the fuck? Yeah, look, I mean, in a, in a country where, like, you know, Doge, and good for Doge, but, I mean, like, all these things are happening. Like, when you go, oh, I actually have an app, you're, you you might as well be Microsoft now. <laughs> right, yeah. No, it functions. Oh, good, yeah. four billion. <laughs> Ray, are you sad sometimes? I get depressed, sure. Do, so sometimes, do you want a, a counselor? Look, I would love if there was just a way where no matter where I am and where, when I am, I could just talk to someone, even if it's on the computer somehow. That's a good point. I mean, so that's a great point that you just made. You said no matter when I am, <laughs> when I am. Uh, so sometimes you're sad and you go, I just don't want to leave my house, but I wish I could talk to somebody online. Is that That's the vibe I'm getting from you. <laughs> That'd be perfect for me. That would be good That'd be for perfect. You, right? It'd be perfect. It'd be, that'd be exactly what I need. Someone that could help you over the internet. I wouldn't care very much who it was. And you well, should. How much they could help me. Just just help me. But eat, but how much better would it be if it was a licensed professional? That'd be nice. Yeah. Well, can I tell you about something that I just found out about? Yeah. It's called BetterHelp. H-E-L-P. It's not a good name. I like the name so far. It's better help. It's a better way to get help. It's committed to it's committed. To, I'm stroking out. It's committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's affordable, more affordable than traditional counseling and financial aid is available. What it is is it's not a crisis line, right? And it's not self-help. 
it's professional right. counseling done securely online. This is this this will be everything I need. I think I I think I can really go to work with this and and, and really get my help. You need your help. I need it. You can start communicating in under forty eight <laughs> hours. Do you understand that? I don't. Uh, I was expecting I have to wait like two or three days, but under forty eight. You're saying forty eight hours is two days. <laughs> so you were. But in under 48 hours, you could have to last. Say, you're, saying under, you're saying under 48, but I said two or three days, so it works out. You know, like... Two, two, two days would be less than would not be less than 48 hours. So the logic works out. because It makes sense. You can be helped very soon, is my point. Visit, I need it. You need it. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily by people that have used the service. We, I'm sure of that. Yeah, they're real people. They have to be real people. How could you fake that? Betterhelp.com slash Tim D. That's better H-E-L-P. Join over a million people who've taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp. They're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Betterhelp.com slash Tim D. Betterhelp.com slash Tim D. Right. You remember when you fell asleep and hit the car uh, head on? The federal agents inside. Yeah. 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 And they mysteriously just. They pulled a gun on me, and they they said, "Go get out of your car," uh, and then they just drove away. Well, and then the cops came too. The cops—I I wasn't allowed to leave. The cops had to come, but they—they they just bolted. Did your car insurance go up after that? Skyrocketed. Well, here's what you I, mean, I couldn't—I couldn't even pay it. I wasn't making that much money, so I had to just stop paying it. And I still don't have a license right now. It's terrible. The reality is, you didn't have the education. The education is what matters. And Gabby oh. is a great place to see if you can get. The same insurance coverage you have now for less money. They are the one true comparison platform with real rates. They give you the so apples. They don't care that if I, if I heard a federal agent, they don't, they don't care about that? I don't think it matters mm. because they're a platform with real rates. Oh. And, and they compare it to companies. Like I've always said these rates feel fake in general. A lot of them are. But they have yeah. companies like Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers all in one place. And so you just put your current insurance information, I guess for you it would be none. <laughs> And right. you get started, and in just minutes, Under you'll investigation. See quotes for the exact same coverage you currently have. It, here's yeah. the thing, Ray. How much would you expect a service like this to cost, comparing insurance rates? How much would you expect it to cost? A couple thousand dollars. A couple thousand, right? Yeah. You know what I would expect it to cost? A million dollars. Yeah, a lot. A lot I, would I would expect it to cost a million dollars to be able to compare car insurance rates. <laughs> because it's it's amazing. It's real time. Yeah. It's, it's 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 like Warren Buffett stuff. It's crazy. Do you know how much this costs? Five thousand dollars? Not a darn thing. It's free. What? Ray. Ray. How? Ray. How do they make money? It's free. I don't know. That's not my problem. <laughs> okay. The people at Gabby have decided to create a free platform where you can compare insurance. Average customers. How much do you think they save per year on average, Ray? Guess. <sighs> 50 bucks? No. They save $961 per year on average. It's right. a great it's a great platform. Gabby.com slash Tim Dillon. That's G-A-B-I dot com. Use the code T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. See if you're getting ripped off by your insurance provider. It matters. Bye. You you know, not, like, you've not how, got how, in on cryptos. You've ridiculed cryptos. You've stood on the sidelines with the institutional investors in your Hamptons home. You've stood there uh, with uh, a lot of the large banks. This is something right. that has surprised many of us. You, instead of embracing the crypto revolution, you didn't really embrace uh, a lot of the Wall Street bet stuff. You stood with your blue bloods in Newport, Rhode Island, in Greenwich, Connecticut, in the Hamptons. Now, and I'm, I'm asking you a question now. You you constantly are just defending the old guard. Right, you well, are a legacy, clear. and I get it. But <laughs> can you speak on this? Can you speak on your resistance? Let's get something clear. I lost blood in Wall Street's bets. How much did you lose? Two fifty, about two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, I, I got out. You know, but I got in. I got out because you know it's like, <laughs> um, it's like you guys. I, I I have hope. I'm the rare cynic. Who can have hope? Yes. You know, I watch a Marvel movie and I cry. Yeah. And I lose some money on Wall Street. Yeah, because um, you're, you're crying because you're being tased. You're watching it through the window <laughs> of someone else's home. And the security approaches. Well, it. I don't have cable. Yeah. Um, so, look, it, 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 everything looks great now. 
and I look like a big idiot. And look, I don't personally care because I'm not the guy, regardless of whether I think it's good or not. Like, I don't think uh, did Tesla you still, is a scam. Did you see the Bill Maher piece on it? I did see it. Um, his reasoning was a little uh, just old man yelling at the sun kind of thing. Yes. But it wasn't totally it wasn't He wrong. wasn't totally wrong. He's like, Ethereum has more market cap than Disney, and it has no pro. You know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, but he's such just well, a, look, he's such a defy, horrible conduit of information. He's such a hateable person. Every time I talk about this, I am every comment section of me and every, every like, I'm the big fat moron who doesn't understand. I'm making ten year old arguments. Let's get something clear: the arguments were never addressed. They can't be addressed. Right? Uh, this is not. Well, you know, uh, how I'll all address of them right things- now. I'll address them right now. Make one of your arguments against crypto. I'm going to address it right now in my okay. in who I am now with my. Ray Bans right. and my Miami hat. Ad- okay, make so an argument. Instance, I'll address it. Here's one. Here's a new one. I have. Yeah, Maybe other people have it. So we have like at least four cryptos that are really like capped up, right? Five, six, a ton, a bunch. Or are they all going to be currency? How about you go fuck your mother? <laughs> but see, are they all going to be now? A, ask you know, me. A, ask me. Is it a good idea to let people that are buying houses defer interest? <laughs> it's a good idea to allow people who are buying houses hey, to Hey, go fuck your mother. <laughs> See, that's the response that stops people like you in your tracks. Because you come, we're yeah. having a party. Right. This is the thing about a party. People are trying to ruin a party. This <laughs> is a party. During a high school party, when you're fingering your friends, and if you're like me, you're hugging your friends because they won't fuck you. Whatever. <laughs> If you're in the middle of a high school party and people are drunk and everybody, it's senior year, nobody comes up to you and goes, do you think we'll all be as close when we're in college? (laughs) And that's what you're doing. You're coming up to people at a party and going, what's tomorrow at 3 p.m. going to be like? And you're like, dude, I don't know, but it's fucking 1 a.m. now and it's lit. So my argument is that shit is lit. No, they're not all going to be currencies. Bitcoin is the reserve currency. And all of the other currencies are going to be little fun things that people can enjoy and possess and find whatever value they find in them. Okay, but that's inherently an argument against them. No. I mean, it's fine. Oh, it's it's, it's a troll doll. Cool. It's a digital troll doll. What it is, is it's an opportunity for people to believe again. It's a beanie baby. We need a Bitcoin movie where they give a Field of Dreams speech. Someone needs to get up and go, like, you know the ta- you know the scene in Tommy Boy where they're talking to the workers that have all been, and they're like, and this town, this factory, I remember. We need a speech where a guy's like, this is giving people a chance to believe again. People that were rioting not two months ago, people that were smashing the windows of the Capitol. This is, they were marching in Charlottesville. This is giving them a, a new thing to talk about. It's better than that. Isn't it better than wearing Viking horns? Yes or yes? I, I'm I not saying problem. Bitcoin's all alt-right people. Stop it. Because I know that's the fucking New York Times angle that all these crypto shits are. But it is anti-establishment people. And it should yeah, be. Yeah, anti-establishment people who are actually doing quite well in the system to begin with a lot of the time. Dave Portnoy is a struggling farmer. <laughs> so And so is Elon Musk. So stop, stop this argument that this is incredibly wealthy people duping... People that spend all day <laughs> looking at their computer. These are good men who are struggling. Look, I mean, I, I hear you. Here, here, I, I don't know that the American psyche, what it needs most right now is hope. I think, you know, I think Fair point. hope is kind of the, 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 the antecedent or whatever to, to self-reflection. I think we need a little more self-reflection, a little less hope. But that being said, I'm all for Doge. I'm Doge. We up. need a little party. We need a party, and we're having a party. And I think we that- haven't worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, where is this hard work that we're paying? All- that we're like celebrating. Uh, parties never are the result of hard work. That's a good point. Good we, parties, hard are- workers don't party. Good yeah. parties are actually better when the people there haven't worked at all. 
Right. The work is the party. Do you understand? <laughs> They're putting all the work into the party. Partying is a job for people. People, you know, we go out with this guy last night after the show. We're eating croquettes at 2 a.m. He goes, he goes, tomorrow night you want to go out? You want to get into something? What circles you guys want to get into? I'm like, this guy's married. I'm sober. I'm exhausted. I just did two shows. There is no partying. I'm 36. What am I going to do? I don't want to stand in a room full of people and hear their shit anymore. I'm right. done. I'm just done. I was 23. I went to parties. Were they sad? Sure. Were they Christmas parties at mortgage companies? Yes. Was I drinking with people twice my age? Yes. Was I getting laid? No. Was I fucking, you know, <laughs> living uh, the life of a 45-year-old divorced man when I was 22? Sure. But whatever <laughs> I was supposed to be doing, it didn't happen. I went to the city and danced a few times at clubs. I get it. But I'm 30 that, fucking yeah. six. Enough's enough already. We got to move the fuck on. What I'd like now is a little cryptocurrency uh, and just some quiet. Yeah, I tried to see the city dancing, but I ended up on the side of the building puking in my in, while I was sitting, like like sitting down, like and then like puking into my lap. When was and that? The cops, huh? When was that? Yeah, decades ago. I mean, it was when I was like twenty two or whatever. And you went to the I, city and you were dancing, and then you just you ended up outside I, puking. I party too hard. That's what happens. I'm, yeah. That's what I want. It all, I want it all right now. I can't. I can't pace myself. Yeah, but the, the guy doesn't understand. He's like, "You guys want to go out? Do you guys party?" I'm like, "Dude, I can't party. I'm tired. I've done two hours of comedy. I could record a podcast. Uh, it's tiring for me. I don't. Is there something wrong with people? And they're like mid thirties, heading heading north to their late thirties, who are like using the word party. Well. As I a always verb. assumed, as not a verb. Really younger, but like by the time I was like 25, I realized, oh, party means cocaine. <laughs> right. I mean, literally. <laughs> like, they're not, it's like, it, it's just yeah. the dancing's an excuse because you need something to do while you're on coke. Right. So it's like, well, that actually what, likes it. You can buy Dogecoin. Yeah. Well, that's the real sad thing is people just, you know, cut the blinds of fucking uh, Oxy and then just clicking the buy button on fucking NFTs and Doge and like, it's, it's, uh, you're not getting like at least at least if you buy a sh like a fucking crazy car you can't afford you get that car you make it late a few times you, you get a fucking you get to drive around before you crash into a kid right uh, there's some fun but like there's nothing tangible I mean I'm not even saying that like, well, babe, look let's assume you make a ton of money later on remember that, if yeah. you live for, if you live to get there there's nothing fun in the interim right remember when that guy hit John Gotti's kid like it was a mistake yeah. and then he disappeared. And apparently, John didn't want him, you know, anything to happen to him, but his, the guys underneath them were like, well, we can't, you know, this is right. what we do. <laughs> so the guy, it's funny now, like the state of the mob now, if you hit that kid with a car, they'd be like, good. <laughs> One care. less mouth to feed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't care at all. <laughs> it's just interesting, like that whole, that's why I like that New York, like when everyone's like, New York, yeah. I'm like, that is, you're talking about like, 30 years ago, like you're more, oh, yeah. more like they're, they're the 70s was the last time they really had like, yeah, a solid grip. Because by the 80s, yeah, God, he just and everyone must have known, oh, this is going down. <laughs> yeah, he was just, just flashing everything. The around. new like, mafia is is fucking Bitcoin. That's the yeah. new mafia. That's the new criminal enterprise. I'm doing the Bitcoin convention down here in Miami, and it makes so much sense that it's here in Miami. Right. Uh, June 4th through the 6th. We don't know what we're doing yet. Uh, the what is it? The third through the sixth, Ben. Third through the fifth. Third through the fifth. The third is what, Ben? Whale night. Well, yeah, whale night. And what is that? So these are the hodls, the people who just hold no matter what, mm -hmm. and they have massive quantities of Bitcoin. They come in on the third mm -hmm. for. Uh, Wait, I don't who's know, calling I'm, it a whale night? They're like they're, they know they're being called whales. Yes, they're Bitcoin. That's whales. a problem. They That's love like, it. When you're a whale, you're like the whole point of a whale is to get taken. <laughs> when did this get like blurred? Not at a party. Uh, and so they want to come in now. Well, Elon Musk is hosting SNL. So let's stop with any idea that there's any type of, you know, uh, uh, you know, like, um, you know, decency left amongst evil tyrants. There used to be some level this, of just call the, this Wednesdays for the whales, Thursdays for the rape victims. Yeah. Like, Can you? <laughs> Thursdays for the rape. Sunday is sexual assault night. Um, <laughs> What do you think about Elon hosting SNL? How bad will it be? Or will it be great? Um, I don't think it'll be great. Yeah, because I don't like, you know, uh, look, it's not, when's it ever funny? So right. that's not the issue. 
It's just more like. Here's what I think would be great. I right. A cast breakdown. Like they're doing a sketch and A.D. Yeah. Bryant turns around to him and starts crying and goes, you have more money than God and people are starving. If they had the balls to ever do uh, that, they wouldn't be on SNL. I know, but just think about it for a minute. Like <laughs> Bowen Yang and A.D. Bryant start crying and going, it's not okay what's happening. People are suffering. Like I want people standing up in the SNL uh a uh, studio, like audience members standing up and screaming, people are sick, they're <laughs> dying, people are suffering. And I hope it's during a sketch where Elon Musk has like a dumb little hat and he's in a costume and people are screaming and people are like, I lost my fucking job, I live on the street. And then Elon Musk is like, he's got to go along with it, he's got to go along with the sketch, but then it's harder and harder to do and he starts looking out in the audience and he's got this little like jester hat on or something. I feel like he would handle that much better than like if it didn't because he'd have some. He is good at like having the pity response to like, "Well, just get into the Doge. That, that'll really help you out." Like, well, yeah, but but I just wanted to go off the rails. I, I I'm I, just saying, but if, yeah. if, if, if it doesn't go off, he'd be do better because like, what, otherwise you're watching this guy who's confident and he's a shark salesman. What do they call it? Shark fin salesman. Snake What's the term oil. There? Snake oil. Shark snake oil. Snake oil. Yeah. And uh, shark fin salesman. <laughs> He's a shark fin salesman. He sells shark fins to make soup in China. Isn't that the fucking thing? Listen to me. But, uh, you know, there's just mechanics to being funny that he doesn't have any of. Like, he's not That's a funny correct. guy. And so it'll, ju it'll just be another lame episode. Most Look, unless there Brian's is some not going to flip out. Unless there's an insurrection. And then I, unless there's an insurrection during the live taping where people start b begging him to give his money to the poor, which I, you're telling me that's not more entertaining. That would be. Yes. I'm just hoping for that. That's so millionaires are going to be asking a billionaire to give more money to the poor. That's the fun of it. Yes. Yeah. That'd be, that's I mean, that'd the be fun of that. that. Look, the inherent hypocrisy is not unheard of. Perfect. But, uh, I just want a little lamb's blood on the door, as they would say. No violence. No violence. Just, yeah. just awkwardness. That would be fun. It would be very fun. Mad TV would have done that. It would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> well, the cast members of Mad TV would have literally been homeless. Yeah. It would have been like, I'm asking you for help. You right. know? I mean, I wonder what it's like. You know, there's going to be all these stories, I guess, that come out after the fact about like, you know, what was it really like backstage with Elon? But it's like, listen, Lauren's worth half a billion and he's a legend, deserves his money, whatever. But like the idea that sure, like. I the, what? I guess. I mean. Uh, I mean, he's got, you know, no, okay, okay. He's the most everyone deserves their money unless they ever. stole it. What'd you say? Everyone deserves their money unless they stole it. So I'm not, right. I'm not like, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't deserve it the last few seasons, but he's deserved sure. it. Sure, what's what I mean? Like, he's gonna curated deserve, comedy. But... The most powerful force in American comedy, probably ever, in terms of what he's curated. Well, that's but why it sucks so much, but sure. That that being said, <laughs> he, he, he didn't think we raised he's the not level poor, over there. right? I mean, the guy's not poor. No, he's doing quite well. So, like, the idea that, like, Elon Musk that comes in and they're all like, I, it's. So, where do you draw the line? Is, like, 500 million. Right. Is that okay? But this guy does have 100 billion. So, I get what you're saying. But, you know, some people would make that argument about people worth 500 million. I look, I mean, we all acknowledge that money is fake, right? With this whole Bitcoin thing. Like, we get it. It's fiat money. A lot of it's created, like, by bullshit and people are acting like Elon Musk, his value went up and therefore like he took that, like he took turnips off your children's plate away from them. Like they're like, like they would have had a sack of flour if he, if the, if the price of Tesla didn't go up. Right. Like it's, it's disconnected. Like it's all like, he, I don't like him. I think it's a big scam. I know, you know, they're, they're good cars. I'm told it's fine, but like, you know, I don't know. I don't think he even invented the well, cars. Elon but Musk he's a good didn't brand himself as like, he's branded himself as kind of like the adolescent billionaire in a way. Like he's sure. this impulsive, uh, social media driven personality that like is talking about going to Mars all the time. And like, you know, has the hot, uh, performer wife who who tattooed uh, alien uh, things on her back, and they named their kid after a, a math equation or whatever. Like he's he's you know, whereas Bill Gates has branded himself as like I am your father, and I will help you, and I'm a public health 
uh, guru and me and my Talk wife. About hope, to make Talk about hope, though. Talk about the lack of hope of watching billion, be like, oh, you can be a billionaire and then you're going to be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates. Right. It's like, what's the point of any of this? At least right. Elon Musk, it gives like the lottery. It gives you a, an illusion of like, oh, like you can just, you, if you make a billion dollars, you can fuck a tree if you want. Yeah, that's or whatever a good he does. point. Yeah, right, right. At least it gives you some, it, it gives you some hope, the idea that it means something. Well, Bill Gates' argument is like, hey, man, I made all this money and now I, I really want control over all life on the planet. So that will motivate a certain group of people. Bill Gates, supposedly there's stuff coming out now where Melinda Gates warned Bill about Epstein's. Like, I don't want you anywhere near him. And Bill's like, I, I think he's a good guy. Like, yeah. they literally met him once, and Melinda's like, hey, I think there's some problems here. And Bill's like, you're always doing this with my new <laughs> friends, you know? You're, she's like, Bill, he's got an island. There's all these young women around. He's like, you're always doing this with my friends. You know I love you, but I also need other people to hang out with. It's, we just can't have a guy's night. It's a boy's night. <laughs> so we can't have man club, men's night. I mean, it's a weird marriage because apparently uh, like one of the deal breakers was like, look, we can be married. I'm not going to cheat on you. Wink, wink. But I'm going to take one vacation a year with my ex-girlfriend where we go to a beach house and ride dune buggies and like talk and talk on the beach. That's and she was like, oh, that's cool. That's yeah. Well, I would too. <laughs> with that kind of money. Yeah. I'd go sure. No, but like, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's just a bizarre. Like, why can't you just go to Vegas and tell your wife you're at a meeting? Why do you have to like, it's a right. weird level of like, I'm going to let you know your well, face. It, I'm really, this is what else. I go back to. Nobody sees any value anymore in lying. Right. The, this is a, a, this, this obsession with truth is destroying our society. Um, lying is, is for people you care about. So this, this thing of like full disclosure all the time, and I want to be honest, I'm going to let it hang out. This is who I am, <laughs> is really destructive, truly. Being who you are, admitting the things you think about, Getting on a, a level of, of honesty and sharing all your thoughts, feelings, fears, and insecurities with the world is terribly destructive, and it will eventually lead to your uh, destruction. I mean, it's it's a horrible idea. You should have yeah. secrets. You should have secrets. Not huge ones, not Epstein-level secrets, but you should have secrets, and you should choose your friends and lovers based on the people you're willing to share certain secrets with. But you don't want to share everything because then you're not a mystery anymore. Nobody likes someone who's not a mystery. You want someone to be a little bit of a mystery. If you're not taking something to the grave, you yeah. lived your life wrong. That's what I mean. All of these billionaires are so upsetting now because you're constantly vomiting every thought on Twitter. You know, right. there's no mystery to them. We don't. We we know everything about them. We know everything about celebrities. Celebrity has been destroyed in this country because it, it's been commodified in this weird way through social media that we're seeing the omelets they eat, the vacations they take. The, there, there, there's no value to the mystery of like, I wonder what that person's really like. Can you imagine how you know how like all the like the, those Nazis who went to Argentina after the war? Yeah. Can you imagine how quickly they would have gotten caught nowadays? Right. Just, like, they would just be, yeah, they'd be TikToking. <laughs> yeah. They'd be TikToking German songs in Argentina. Right. But they, the problem is the lack of mystery. And I've talked about this and 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 it's with 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 people that are successful in business, athletes, entertainers. People don't want to know you that well. It's why I don't do a podcast every day. It's why I don't right. do an Instagram story all the time. I love Whitney Cummings. You know what I mean? I do, and I'm, I'm legally obligated to say that because I've signed sure. a contract. But I know I do love Whitney, but the reality is Whitney does Instagram stories all day, every day. Now, yes, they'll be used in a documentary several years from now, charting her course into uh, madness. And they will and be evidence used, in court. <laughs> and they'll be used as evidence in court when she finally blows uh, the brains off of that uh, veterinarian she's dating. But the point <laughs> is... I'm saying it, she's too exposed. You're too accessible. People want less. She always tells me they want more. And I'm like, they think they want more. Like people tell me, I want you to podcast every day. And I'm like, you think you want that. You don't. You don't the, know what you want. The artist has to be above the pa the, the patron of the arts, whatever we call the, the, the victim or the, the, the audience. Yeah, I love that I'm, <laughs> I, we're saying this. I'm in a Miami hat and shades, smoking <laughs> cigarettes in a hotel bathroom. Ray, do you listen to music? Uh, yeah, I'm a fan of music. I, I like classical music and jazz. You listen to podcasts? Not usually. I'll tell you what. I These Apple EarPods I have, I don't like them. If I lose them, they're very expensive. And they always are dying and I need to charge them. Yeah, no, no those Apple ones, they are uncomfortable. They cost so much money. Uh, and I don't have the money, so I just don't, I can't listen to my jazz. Raycon, they last six hours, Ray. 
Six hours. That's crazy. I would listen to so much jazz. I love this. Is this a real company? It is. It's Raycon, Ray. It you sounds get, like me. I'm Ray. You get crisp, powerful beats at half the price of other premium audio brands. Raycons, they look great and feel even better. They come in a range of cool colors with customizable. Yeah, the Apple ones. Can you get them in different colors, Apple? No. They like everything to be white. Very suspicious to me. Very strange. I don't like that. Yeah. Raycons are black, and then you can get other colors. And they're, they're cool, yeah. man. It's cool to have something different. Yeah. Raycons are built to go wherever you go with quick and seamless Bluetooth pairing and compact charging case. I have a theory that I can't prove, but they make them all white so that you recognize what they are. Then people can easily steal them and you have to buy new ones. Ooh, that's probably true. Yeah. They're always up to something over there. But I'd rather give my money to Raycon. And uh, if you go to Raycon.com slash Tim, you're going to get 15% off. Raycon.com slash Tim, 15% off. And we know we want to support the show. We know that. We know that because we're we're supported. Isn't it a good way for people to support the show? This would be because you get to support the show and listen to trumpets and and drums. Everything that's in jazz can be you know in these earphones, and you're helping the show. Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, all this great stuff can be in your ears. Etta James, and no one's gonna. And people are gonna put a knife to your neck and take it. Ever listen to Etta James? Hot Oh, she's amazing. My love has come along. Have you ever? Have you ever heard it last? Yeah, no, it's great. I'm, I'm singing along with it. Sing, sing some bit last right now. At last, my love is coming along. That's not bad, right? <laughs> so, I love shit. You can do that. Raycon wireless earbuds. Yeah. An incredible name. Raycon wireless earbuds. You, you get them <laughs> and you're good. <laughs> get them and buy six or eight pairs. Because Stop asking so many questions. Just buy them. Just buy them now. We don't need your mouth. Yeah. Ears, not mouths. Let your wife have the apple. You take the Raycon. Yeah. Buyraycon.com slash Tim. Buyraycon.com slash Tim. Ray. Yeah. Do you sometimes not? Are you disappointed by the options in the supermarket? Yeah. You know, I want to make a nice souffle, but I can't figure out how to do it. So I just buy a pizza. Sometimes don't you want people to just deliver fresh food to your door? I just want, you know, I, I, I want to stop feeling so unhealthy. So HelloFresh. Like, I, I keep eating the pizza. I need something nice and green coming to my house. HelloFresh. Try meals ready in 20 minutes or less. Lightning prep. Very easy. That's the problem because I don't want to wait. I don't wanna, I'm too greedy. I don't want to wait so much time for a nice fresh meal. 20 what? minutes or less. That's great. 20 minutes or less. There's no grocery store trips. You can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. I Hello, hate the grocery store because we have people you see when you go to the grocery it's store. The it's the worst. awful depressed people. It's not sanitary. Yeah. HelloFresh's fresh, fresh ingredients are sourced directly from the growers and delivered from the farm to your front door in under a week. Contact free. Of course. They've been named Newsweek's most trusted meal kit company of 2021 with over 4 million households served. You can get a better value. Well, I trust Fresh Newsweek. So, I mean, if they trust them, it just it works out. Has Newsweek ever been wrong? No, HelloFresh so. is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant. Look, you don't need math to know. This, is, this sounds pretty good. This is nice. I mean, the reality is if, if you're into being healthy and sourcing your food directly from the growers yeah. and, and the showers... And the farms and all that come to your tables. Yeah. And the problem with the foods now is that they all come from Monsanto. I want real cheese, Tim. Real raw milk cheese that like I can taste like unpasteurized. That's what I want. I don't want this Monsanto cheese. No, the problem with all the the produce now is it's all made by Raytheon. Right. But if They're you cooking get, on the back of a, of a scud missile. Yeah, we don't want that. But HelloFresh offers uh, all kinds of experiences. You got to go to HelloFresh.com slash TimDillon12. Use the code TimDillon12 for 12 free meals. I mean, that's insane. That really is insane, including free yeah, shipping. I mean, you get just, 12 free meals. I mean, folks. This is no such thing as a free lunch, but you got I got 12 of them here. 12 of them. It's really good to eat things that are fresh, and they're very quick. You, they, they have all the spices all measured out for you already. It's super yeah. easy. You can just cook a quick meal, and you can impress somebody, impress a 
your love, your girlfriend that you know your wife doesn't know about. Impress whoever because it's yeah. such a good. Now these these younger women these days they want to fucking they want to be impressed by fresh food. You can't, it's not like when you were growing up. You little you're an little older guy, and you you used to, you used to cook a lasagna. They want something fresh. No, they want something you get this. Fresh. Hello, fresh. Yeah, that's what you can call um, them when they walk in. <laughs> When they walk in the door, you go, hey, hello, fresh. <laughs> and you're a little skeeved out, but they're like, all right, cool, cool. I guess you get made, you made but dinner. What, and here's, you what makes it, here's what makes it okay. You go, hello, fresh. And they go, what? And they go, I got hello, fresh. And they go, oh, I'm sorry. I was I, I was jumping I to conclusions there. It's I thought fun. you were referring to parts of my body. <laughs> I like to cook, and I like to cook when I know that I get everything delivered to me in a smart way. And it's accessible and easy. And that, to me, is what all these meal kits are about. If you want to diet, the big problem is going out to eat. You can't do it. The other big I, problem- I have tried these other meal kits. and I, I open the box. I'm like, what kind of moron packaged this? Yeah. You or want you it done the, the smart way. You go to the grocery store. Like, I'm going to start a diet. You go to the grocery store. All of a sudden, you're chugging ranch dressing in aisle six. We know who you yeah. are. So what you do is- You have a disease. Good. Accept it. Because they give you a box of fresh ingredients and all the instructions, and you do it, and in under twenty minutes, you got a meal. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know well, you're a person. Tim Dillon twelve twelve free meals. Go to hellofresh.com slash Tim Dillon twelve and use the code Tim Dillon twelve. You get twelve free meals. I mean, it's America's number one meal kit. It's a great way to support your health and this show. That's what it is. You're doing both. You're doing both. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Brent, can you Ben? Can you bring me a cigarette out now, and we'll see what happens when I smoke it in the room? What is it? It's only two hundred and fifty dollars, Ray. Yo, I was renting a car the other day, Ray. They go, it's two hundred dollars if you smoke in the car. I swear to God, I went charge that now. <laughs> I'm like, you might want to ch just charge it now because <laughs> it's. I mean, uh, I'm gonna light a cigarette up as I drive out of the rental place. <laughs> You're gonna see me smoking in the car. So I get an ashtray or something, Ben. Jesus Christ, these people. And I, uh, thank you. I'll, yeah, sure, I'll use a bottle of water. Um, That's awful. I want to quit, but I also thought, should I just bring an ashtray wherever I go? Get a little soap dish, Ben, for the cigarette. Jesus Christ. Thank you. Get me a soap dish. Look at this. They know people are smoking. Well, this, is for, this is for whatever it is, but. <laughs> right, have, like have you quit yet? Have you quit yet? No, I, uh, I haven't quit yet. Uh, it just tastes too goddamn good. <laughs> I just enjoy it. Ben, did you hear what he said? Repeat what you just said. I said, have you quit yet? It just tastes too goddamn good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. Yeah. I don't no, want to live like, till I'm 70. What's the point? To entertain you know, these you, ungrateful pigs? <laughs> You know, if like if you say, when you have to stop doing heroin, it's like <laughs> no know, one you, in you my might, family like, stop. My cousin is still on it. My other cousin and my friend Ryan, who just Venmoed me for ten dollars, is in Fort Lauderdale. He's still on it. So I don't think anyone quits heroin. Some people do. I didn't. Some uh, do. Didn't Jimmy uh, Jim, Jimmy Hendrix stop or something? Maybe. Yeah, that sounds like uh, a PR campaign. We'll never get to the bottom of that. <laughs> No, whatever. But like, at least, like, heroin, at least, like, you know, you go, well, I can't, you know, if I, if I do another shot of heroin, I might, you know, strangle a baby or whatever. You know, fall asleep on my baby. There's things you do on heroin that aren't good. But smoking a cigarette, it's like, yeah, I might die. You know, what, so I can't live to see fucking, uh, you know, Jake Paul become president? <laughs> fighting, fighting the goddamn... Yeah, the, 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 the horrors we're all going to witness are, are unimaginable. <laughs> They're unimaginable, the horrors that are going Just the climate horrors that are going to... Like, you won't be able to leave your house at a certain period. Like, the, it's so hot wherever you go now that you go, how much hotter can it get? And I'm not even a fucking global warming freak, but, like, how much hotter can this shit get? Uh, I think a lot hotter. I mean, it's what, you know, brontosaurus is like the heat. And that's what you know the world used to be like. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll, it, it'll be it'll be a buck twenty in the shade all around the world. Yeah, that's gonna be a prop. But but Dubai is preparing. They're doing everything that you would do outside, like the head people. They're doing it inside now in a climate controlled environment. They yeah, have indoor like, you know, ski resorts. Yeah, but like that's not like a sustainable thing. It's like 
we're going to use more fossil fuels to, to, to you know, yes, drive us even correct. further to climate. <laughs> yes. This is the mission return kind of thing. No, that's why Musk and all these guys are like, we got to terraform and go to Mars. But that seems like a fool's errand, too. Do you think the rich ever get off this planet? It feels I like. Don't, I, yeah. No. I, if, no. No. Yeah, I, look, you realize like they're, they're trying to like. Musk has been doing this for years, and he's nowhere near where the Apollo missions were. What the fuck are we doing? Like, like we, 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 if we hadn't let up after Apollo and like actually, or, you know, I know we built the space shuttle, but like we didn't do much. You know, maybe, but by the time it's gonna be decades before we get to Mars. Like, you know, like even more. And we're gonna terraform it. I mean, you probably need a hundred years or two hundred years to do that, at least. Yeah, it's, there's, there's no time for it. It's just a fun pet project. Because, you, yeah. know, you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> by the time, within 20 years, I do think people will start rioting. Like, they're not going to allow Musk to, like, you know, control martial resources like this. And so, like, I'm, I mean, look, maybe they just start shooting crowds. <laughs> you know, like the crowds well, that show on, up. Hold like, on. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we, we've we always said this. Like, you know, the, the, yeah, the idea that they're going to deep yeah. state, whatever it is. And, like, for now, they're content to, like, just play behind the scenes. But if we did rise up, well, they'll start shooting into a crowd and like, disperse you. I'm just saying, like, that's, like we're in a phase one, but we're acting like, oh, it's, you know, if we go to phase two, they're going to stay in phase one. Like, no, they'll, they'll, they do not keep pace with us. <laughs> yeah, it is funny to see, like, what will be the next level of response from them. Right. I always remember because yeah. that just being like, he goes, the state can dole out an unimaginable level of violence. It's terrifying, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. No, I mean, like, like these, these, the Poor one Chris thing man, they perfected. It's that guy. It's just the same article. He's not wrong, but it's yeah. the same article every week for the last 25 years. And it's, it's just- all like Lord of the Rings fucking <laughs> fan fiction. <laughs> it's just like with like names inserted, like, you know, <laughs> Pelosi, Pelosi's on the face of Mount Doom. Like, shut up. Shut the fuck up. You old, you old it, brimstone preacher. Hey, why don't you invest in Doge? <laughs> But you know, my, it's my like best one character thing. ever is uh, a hype beast Chris Hedges, sneakerhead Chris Hedges, where he believes everything he believes, but he has a collection of 2,000 pairs of sneakers. <laughs> and he goes, My one shame is that I can't stop buying sneakers. <laughs> right. He shows up to all of these lectures in churches where he's like, We are in the beginning of the fifth great extinction. But you look at his feet and he's got like just new sneakers, like <laughs> like really colorful, like hype beast sneakers on. <laughs> and he just, it's every lecture he gives. He right. just shows up in these sneakers. And then people start to notice it, and they're like, hey, man, what are these sneakers? He goes, it's my one weakness. It's my one failing. Why, why Chris Hedgens thinks that currency will fail, and also he never wears the same pair of shoes twice. <laughs> <laughs> it would be hilarious. We found out he had, like, a compound in Miami. Like just, <laughs> just like a $10 million compound. Like the chick from Black Lives Matter, she bought four million dollar houses. I just think it'd be hilarious if Chris Hedges owned like a a twenty million dollar Scarface estate in Miami. No, he hangs out with hookers who are doing crocodile. <laughs> you know, he, he's like the worst. It'd be great. Have a little uh, fun. Have a little fun, Chris. We know it's the end. You're not wrong, but have a little fun. Get in a Doge. Look, I, I, I know would love an article next week where Chris Hedges goes, "I'm wrong. Dogecoin is the future." And it's just a really <laughs> well-written intellectual case for cryptocurrency. I mean, if you think about it for a second, I'm again, he's a good guy, I guess. But like when you write the same article all the time, you're just some, you're a slut for attention. Right. Can you, well, can you imagine job. being. It's well, it's not does. his job. That's not, that's not whatever that is. It's not his job. He teaches like, people in prisons things. He cheers well, them up. Well, that's your job. My point is. Like, can you imagine sitting to in prison? Be so, and you're like, I want to get out of prison and finally get a job, see my kids. And Chris Hedges shows up and he's like, we are in the middle of the fifth grade extinction. All life on earth is going to be going away. And you just have these yeah, yeah, guys. I pull out a resume, though. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, guys, like, I'm really learning how to put together like a resume and try to market myself. And Chris is like, the corporate oligarchs have pillaged all resources on Earth. And the, the warden comes up. He goes, hey, can you pep it up a little bit next time? Like, can you inject a little levity into this? You know, these guys, we just don't want them to go out and reoffend. It would just be funny if they find, if they told Chris, they're like, listen, we really want to have you here at the prison. But the last time you left, uh, they all just started raping each other and beating the <laughs> shit out of each other because they said nothing matters. And there was a riot. 
Welcome to the fifth grade extinction, motherfucker. <laughs> what if he became like a, like a David Icke showman where like he walked out <laughs> on an arena and he's like, and he did exactly that. He's like, welcome to the fifth grade extinction, motherfuckers. And I was like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, the corporate oligarchs have pillaged this fucking planet. <laughs> Poor David Icke. He's like the one guy. He got displaced by QAnon. Like all these crazy. Can you imagine David Icke having to explain to somebody QAnon where they're wrong? Well, like, like, it's like, not like that at all. Actually, you you've jumped the shark. <laughs> I remember when I first got into this in 08, uh, like you know, really got into like conspiracy stuff. He was the guy. Like, oh, this is the crazy one. Like right. at that point, like Alex still made sense to a certain extent. You know, you could tell he's you know whatever. But you know, there's logic. There's like all this stuff in 9/11 conspiracy. And this guy's just talking about reptile. Oh, this this guy's just out there. And now he's the least crazy. It's completely inverted. <laughs> right. Yeah, David Ike's David Ike's like the sane one who makes sense. But it, it's just so funny to me that like David Ike just, I mean, he's got to go on a retirement run like Cher. You know, like he's got he's got to just nice talk. I'm retiring, but we're just gonna do one more. Like <laughs> the funniest thing ever was that episode. Where, like, he shows up. He's in, like, this big arena in the UK. He's like, oh, I used to play soccer here. Yeah. Oh, I remember. And the audience is like, get to the lizards. Like, he's yeah. he's waxing poetic about his days as, like, a football player. Right. They're like, what are you doing, David? I was a striker. <laughs> <laughs> you realize everyone just wants to be famous. Like, yeah. Shit. Well, um, yeah, but, like, you know, it's with Hedges. It's like, it, it's... This guy is all grandiose, but it's like, why do you keep writing articles then? The same article. It's because you want to get shared on Twitter. Like, you're the same little dirty little animal we all are. You're a di dirty little animal. Maybe the, maybe the, uh, maybe the um, uh, episode title here. I just think he should move to Miami. I, I know it's all over when Chris Hedges moves to Miami. <laughs> Just moves to my. Wouldn't it be funny if Barstool Sports hired Chris Hedges? That'd be amazing. <laughs> and they end up suing him. They end up making a, a clown picture shirt with him. Or Call like your daddy's court. new co-host, Chris Hedges. <laughs> he is. He's not wrong. Like when you read these things, you don't. You don't. You don't look at the article and go, "Yeah, this guy's wrong." It's just funny that over and over again, it's just like we get it. It's like, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Cato wasn't wrong either. I think I don't know. There was guys in Rome, like, yeah, sure. Oh, I you thought want you meant to Cato Kalen, the guy who lived <laughs> in the guest house of OJ's. I'm like, this is an interesting <laughs> reference. You're like, Cato Kalen wasn't wrong, <laughs> or is it Cicero? I'm thinking of. Well, there's guys, there's guys in Rome who were like, you know, uh, this is gonna end bad. And we was were that like, five or ten, Ben? Five. So then, why did you put up both hands? I didn't know if you what a horrible producer. <laughs> He's a horrible producer. He's, He's horrible. holding out his hands like Jesus on the cross. There's not a day I don't regret meeting him and what he's done to my show and my career. <laughs> He's just destroyed it. <laughs> Completely destroyed it. Um, um, yeah, we met yeah. this kid from Clubhouse who's like 19, and he says he's a venture capitalist. He's like driving his father's car. I mean, it's like it. the whole thing here is... I don't understand how they... Like, but my whole thing when I saw all these people in Clubhouse for like like angel investors and VCs is like, where did you get all this money from? Like, I'm like you can't be a 19 year old in venture cap. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, they don't have that. any money. No, there is no money. There is yeah. no money. You can't be a look. If, if there might be some logic that like, well, I'm a guy who goes gets the money from the people with the money and like gives it to you. Like, that's not a cap. That's some kind of weird in between scam. You're a bag man. Yeah. It's just bag men. Club, yeah. Clubhouse is just a bunch of bag men, the best. <laughs> I, I mean, he's a good kid, and maybe he'll succeed one day. He's it's not just, a good kid. He's a scumbag who's on Clubhouse telling people he's an investor. Stop mitigating. These people are dirt. <laughs> there's, there's a possibility. Don't go Hollywood on me, Tim. There's a possibility. Well, he, he, he keeps telling everyone he's not gay, which gives me maybe some hope. Why he, does he have to tell people that? Well, that's oh, why people. I'm a little hopeful. But the uh, but he's he's what? too doughy. He's too doughy for me. He looks like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh, because, because, because you're hanging out together. with him, you mean? Yeah, he's just a good looking young man. No, he's not. Okay. It seems like really this day and age. On the There's digital, a cuteness to him, but he's too pudgy. He, you know what it is? Have you ever seen someone who you know on the inside of them is fat? Yeah. And you go. Look, I look in the mirror. You go. No, but like you go, you're squishy. Yeah, yeah. You're squishy, and you're gonna be a big yeah. fat pincushion. But right. you have a short period of time before you're not. 
and that's the period of time it might be nice to have sex with you. But then you're going to be a just, you're just going to be a doughy Jew boy. And there's nothing wrong with that. But hey, ma'am. It is what it is. I just, I just imagine, like, as we're taping this, you just hear, like, them, like, using a battering ram to get people out of the hotel. Like, get the fuck out. I scream at them sometimes. Like, it'll be, like, 1.30. They're like, you have to check out. I'm like, I'm going! It's a nice place, though, right? Hand me my phone. Let's see. No. I mean, we're, we're, in, we're, in, we're in a whatever. Like, the place where... Do they have room service yet? Yeah, we're in a, a, a better place. Oh, so it's funny. My friend, who I said address, and I sent him two question marks. He never got back to me. So they're, they're he's 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 a drug. He's drugging. My yeah. friend's out there drugging. God love him. God love. Wait, him. He moved to Miami for the industry. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was in rehab down here, and now he's doing well. Well, yeah. Look, you should go to re rehab in Wisconsin. What are you doing going to Miami? Um. Yeah, I mean, here's the reality, man. At the end of the day, people got to go to where they feel they're going to be, they're going to do best. And my friend is, uh, he's had some struggles with drug addiction and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, other things like, you know, he's just, he's got problems. And he's in Fort Lauderdale right now trying to figure it out. Oh, good but, for him. Good for him. Well, oh, he's in rehab now. I don't know. I think he's out doing drugs now. Oh, okay. Well, look, I wish you the best. I was watching you and Joe Rogan having a cocktail. I'm like, that's not the way it should be happening. <laughs> you should be sober. Look, I wish him the best on his journey, and I hope he uh, has a long, winding well, move road. move to Austin. <laughs> Why don't you move to Austin? It's the I'm, greatest I'm city to. it's ever been. Well, I was about to move to L.A., and you just fucking, you like a turnip, you just left. <laughs> you, left. you just fucking I Austin mean, is, know, I listen, my house that I'm buying... Just yeah. got appraised for $100,000 less than I'm buying it for. Oh, but really? because I signed the appraisal waiver, I still have to do the deal. So come on in. We're all underwater. <laughs> come on in. We're getting underwater again. Well, you got every new. No, I think the appraisal is fucked. And I think that the sales are not being recorded. Like uh, the, 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 the appraisal is not reflecting the market. The market is insanely hot. It's the hottest yeah. real estate market in America. The problem with these appraisals is that, that they don't uh, necessarily like all these sales that haven't been recorded yet aren't aren't used as comps and it's there there there's probably a two month three month lag um right. and or i'm getting fucked again <laughs> it's either one either one but i'm going in with a down payment and it's a nice house and and whatever i'm happy about it i, lo I, lo I love the whole rationale you've built out already like look you understand it's a lag in the market yeah well it's, it's right <laughs> no I, I i'm fully aware it's a, a narrative that i'm building in my own head i'm just hoping it's true i'm hoping that new york and and, and, and la are taxing people out so they're all coming to, Fl uh, to florida and, and texas and austin's hot and the tech people are, so i'm hoping that the the house and you know these things hold their value and increase in value that's the hope when you buy a house the first house I bought was an unmitigated disaster, but it was really good for, you know, the stories I tell on the show. And, you know, perhaps this will be as well. I just hope that it's, you know, I hope that I, here's what I hope, because I, I pitched shows about the last house I was in. I don't want to pitch any shows about this house. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I don't want any horror that I feel could be cinematic coming out of this experience. We should, you should, you should do, you should yeah. buy your old house at some point. For what? Why? For, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be fun for the show to live in Long story. Island. I don't know. Just to own it. And then like, you know, what a, it's, a look, it's a good gimmick. It's a good, fun gimmick. Yeah. Tim Dillon buys his old house. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Jake Paul is snatching Floyd Mayweather's hat. And the way I compete with that is buying the house that I foreclosed on. <laughs> I got my house back. People are like, who gives a shit? Fat fuck. Get out of here. Who cares? I got my house back. No one cares. No one cares. Yeah, go die in it. <laughs> Where can people find you? At Chris Edges. <laughs> <laughs> at Twitter and Instagram, at Ray Kump. Uh, I have a podcast called uh, Kump Podcast. Kump Podcast. Uh, comes out every week. You can, uh, we have a Patreon. Uh, follow the link. The link will be in the description. Uh, you can get extra well, episodes every week. Tell of them Kump. what the Patreon is, too. Let's just say it here. It's the Kump Podcast Patreon. Perfect. Um, yeah. So, you know, donate to that. You get extra episodes of the show. And you do it's with a Lucy, great show. Lucy Steiner. Lucy Steiner is my co-host. She's phenomenal. She's hilarious. We, we have great Famed rapport. Brooklyn communist. Lucy well, Steiner. You know, she, I'm kidding. No, no. Well, she, she, yeah, totally wrong. But, you know, but we, we have lively debate. It's fun. 
listen, I love I love a communist. I can buy dinner. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Um, Ray Cump show is hilarious. Support Thank it you. on YouTube. Support it on Patreon. Ray, we're gonna try to get you down. All, we can you come down June for a week or two and do stuff? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll be back in the studio uh, this Friday recording next week's episode for all you people who are like, I'm the fucking studio. But then you also want to see me live. And it, this is the thing with these people. It's all the demands all the time. We want to see you live, but also you should be in the studio. But you're too fat, but you're not as fat as we want you to be. But <laughs> you're uh, using a camera angle on yourself that makes you look less fat. That's all the Instagram comments. But um, um. Why don't we start like a fucking line of clothes called Thick Bitch? T H I C B I T. I'm not, not even kidding. Like, dude, if I'm we started it. something called Thick Bitch, like Ben should Google it and find out if they have it already. But like, um, I think Brendan has something like that. The, th thick, the boy. Th thick Boys. Who cares? We'll do Thick Bitch. What about Thick Bitch? What about T H I X? Like Thick Bitch. I mean, no, that's crazy. <laughs> thick <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> but like Thick Bitch. Yeah. But Brendan has thick boy. Yeah. What about... Thick bitch. No, what, we'd be the first thick bitch. We'd be the first thick bitch, which could be big yeah. or like... Mm -hmm. uh, um. What about like like a woman, a, a clothing line for plus size women? Like queen pig. <laughs> Bacon <laughs> bitch. Bacon <laughs> bitch. Bacon <laughs> bitch. Bacon <laughs> bitch. I mean, here's the thing. I know that we're doing this as a joke, but you got to realize <laughs> it would be the most successful thing we've ever done by like a long shot. I, 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 like want, I, want, bacon, I want a piece of the pie if, here. If Bacon do, Bitch even this. just became this big merch thing, it would be much bigger than like any hour special or podcast right. or any of that. Like those are the guys behind Bacon Bitch. We're just <laughs> sitting on a yacht in Miami <laughs> eating baked beans. There's a restaurant in Miami called Bacon Bitch. There's a restaurant called Bacon Bitch. <laughs> Smart. Of course there is. And it's in Miami, right? Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, of course there is. They <laughs> call it bacon, bitch. <laughs> um, all right, everyone. Uh, parting thoughts, parting wisdom. Um, yeah, I, I think Clubhouse is going to really make a comeback, and I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> How fun it would be if there are live shootings on Clubhouse? Like, you just hear... <laughs> Like people start doing live shootings on Clubhouse, like it's just it's become, Eric Weinstein. It, it's Eric Weinstein. <laughs> no, it just becomes a place to like live stream mass shootings, like mass <laughs> casualty events on Clubhouse. That'll be good for the stock price. Like what? What about a place where it's just after every mass casualty event, there an instant conspiracy room on Clubhouse where people just start talking about it with, with no information. Actor. <laughs> actors, this whole thing was fake. Just show up to funerals. You crazy actors. <laughs> We're from Clubhouse. When yeah. Seeing it's the thing CEO of they, Clubhouse. Seeing the thing that they believed in get totally taken over by cranks and and scammers is one of the funniest things in the world to me. It's just hilarious. I mean, there's just no way out of the fun house. That guy, the people that have owned it have been working in Silicon Valley for 20 years. They're like, we finally got some. We finally right. figured something out. And then it's just been invaded by like people writing bad checks. <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning, it was like Elon's coming on, this, that, and the other thing. Now it's just like, you know, people who embezzled money from their husband's fucking, you know, marina are now on Clubhouse <laughs> trying to learn from Ty Lopez. It's, it's a bullshit like, fundraiser for dead kids. What'd you say? Some fundraiser for a dead kid. Yeah. Like People are just stealing their kids' cancer money or on Clubhouse. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, folks. See you on Clubhouse. Goodbye. <laughs>